Welcome to September's Legal Challenge. Today's problem is combination sum three. Find all possible combinations of k numbers that add up to a number n. Given that only numbers one to nine can be used and each combination should be a unique set of numbers. So that's actually very helpful that each combination can only be a unique set of numbers. So we should never have any repeating numbers. Now, if we are given the number k equals three and n equals seven, then we can see our output's gonna be one to four because this is the only combination of numbers from one to nine uh, with three numbers that's ever gonna equal seven. With three and nine here, we have one to six, one, three, five, and two, three, four. Uh, so that's basically it. Um, now, one of the things that we can see with this problem is that the numbers that we can use are potential candidates, let's say, are always gonna be sorted. It's gonna be one through nine. So that's actually very helpful in what we want to uh, use in our approach. We can use a depth first search recursion. And what we're gonna do is basically check every single, um, go through a recursive loop where we check to see every single combination that we can build from our numbers one through nine. And we'll build up our stack as we move along. And once we have um, a stack that is the length of K, we'll check to see if the number is n and if it is we'll add it to an output and if it isn't we just will stop our recursion right there because one of the good things about this is because it's sorted once we see that the sum is greater than the sum that we want to calculate for we could stop our loop we don't need to calculate anymore after that because say that we have like one two six now we want to check one two seven well we don't need to check that because we already know everything after this point is going to be greater than nine so we could break our loop there all right, so the first thing I might want to do is set a output of an empty list. And we're going to do a depth first search recursion. And a couple primers we need to pass. First, we need to pass our stack or the uh, build list that we're building up. And we need to pass in our number to know where we are in our recursion. Like, are we at one, are we at two? Um, and that way we can know, like, we're not going to make any repeats and, and check numbers that we've already set. So we don't need to set here. We just need to know where are we in our in, in our recursive path, let's say. Uh, and the last thing we want to pass is some so far. And what this is going to allow us to do is uh, not have to check our build to see how what the sum is every single time. We can just check that here and say, hey, if the sum that we've calculated so far equals n, then add our build to the output. All right. So the first thing we need to do here is have our base case, right? And if this build, I should say the length of this build, is equal to k, then we know we can end our recursion. We don't need, want to go any further than that. Uh, but one thing we need to do is check to see if our sum so far equals n. Because if it does, then we add it to our output. Otherwise, we don't, we don't and we just, keep, um, we just stop our uh, recursion. So if sum so far equals n, then add, add to the pen. Uh, append to our output the build and this is our stack that we're building up um, and that would be it so at this point here this is where we're going to be actually making our recursion uh, and what we'll have to do is basically check from i in range of the number we're on all the way up to nine and we actually need to add one there to make sure we take care of nine um, and we will call our def search We'll call our pass in our build plus the number that we've just calculated for. We'll pass in our uh, i as a num, but we'll actually have to add one there so that we don't like repeat the same number. And we need to pass in our sum so far plus the i. So this is going to be what allows us to check to make sure that the number is equal to the number we're checking for, right? And one thing we can actually do here is just check sum so far plus i. If this is greater than n, then we can just break our loop, actually. We don't need to calculate any further because uh, that would be a waste of time since we know our sum so far has already exceeded n. Like We don't need to calculate any more than that. And that would be it. Um, all we need to do now is just call our depth for search. We'll call in a pass in an empty list as a stack. We'll pass in our num so far, which is going to be, or I'm sorry, number we're on, which is going to be one first, and the sum so far, which is going to be zero at first. And that's it. After that, we just return our output, and this should solve the question. Let's make sure this works.
looks like it does. And there we go. So that's accepted. That works perfectly fine and it's a good solution. Uh, one thing to note is one of the things also you can do is actually use iter tools. And why don't we just use iter tools and find all the possible combinations for mm, the numbers one through nine with a length of K, right? And we actually have a tool for that in iter tools. <clears throat> so we can use create a list, say nums I for I in what range of one through nine plus one. Uh, we'll have this nums and we'll say, okay, give me all the combinations using iter tools. That's in nums with a length of k, right? So this is going to give us all possible combinations with a length of k. And then really all we can just do here is say, all right, well, we turn for c in combo if the sum of c equals n, then add it to our list and just return that. And let's make sure that works. It does. And this should be accepted. It does. And shockingly, this actually is faster in lead code. Now, technically, this is slower in terms of time complexity because we're not breaking our loop um, before we're actually checking for every single combination. But it actually runs faster. And the reason for that, I'm not completely sure. But my guess is it's got something to do with the way the algorithm works for combinations here. It's just whatever is going in the background, it's faster than my stupid little recursive for loop. Um, so sometimes like, even though in theory, like my time complexity is faster, sometimes these things, the reality just doesn't match and that this is actually faster. So it's like one of those things to remember, stay humble, even though you think you know something, like the reality might be different. This might actually be a better use than uh, my recursive function. So. All right, I think I'll end it there. Thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.